Welcome to tonight's show. This is Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking about the New York Comic Con, about a couple of shows that came out during that time. Uh, some first looks, some previews, some some surprises. Not really surprises. We knew they were going to be awesome. Uh, we're talking about canceled Star Wars shows, and we're talking about the Purge series. How it, It's coming in the next big thing. It's going to come out every year. Stay tuned. Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. See, Chewbacca, he likes to make an entrance. He comes from very far away, and then, you know, you just hear him get louder. That's because he's rushing forward at the speed of sound. Like, he actually can make his Wookiee call off in the distance and arrive before the Wookiee call comes to you. That's how fast he is. He's faster than the speed of sound. Faster. 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 Okay. So, as you saw in the intro, we are talking a lot of stuff. But let's start it off the same way we start off every week. And that is with the horrible movie of the week. Now, we are going to put a little bit of a twist on this one. Brendan watched the horrible movie this week. So, yay me! And yay! Oh, sorry, Brendan. All right, Brendan, why don't you... Uh... <laughs> why don't you let us know what horrible torture you subjected yourself to this week. All right. This week, I watched... Rage. You might be thinking, Rage mean that sequel to Carrie? No. Mm-mm. No. That's Rage. The full title of that is Rage Carrie 2. And I believe this. I've actually seen this movie. Um, no, I've, I've seen Rampage. I haven't seen Rage. Okay, yeah. so okay. Rampage Rage. is bad too. But go ahead. Tell, tell. Why shouldn't we see this movie? All right, well, it's a Nicolas Cage movie. And okay, so it, that just uh, don't see it. Nicolas Cage, all right. Moving on. No, I'm just joking. Go ahead. <laughs> That's well, really almost it, all the it, reason we need that. Nicolas Cage, he pretty much takes any job offered him. So it's really a coin toss, but probably a bad coin toss as to whether it's a good movie because everyone knows you just have to pay him enough and he'll do the movie, right? <laughs> all right, so, but I got top five reasons why not to see this because mm-hmm. this turned out to be a bad one of his movies. Well, yeah. If it's one that's already, like, I've never heard of Rage, so it sounds... I'm not sure if this made into theaters or not, but... Sounds like almost a straight to It had a few big people in it. It had Nicolas Cage. It had I, some other, like, you know, I guess, like, B-list actors that I've seen in other stuff. Um, but, yeah. So the number uh, five reason, uh, I want to so give So you like that... to count down, whereas I like to count up. Huh? Yeah, because countdowns make more sense sometimes. Right? Yeah. Everyone does top fives. I also do round my off to a five, unlike you. Sometimes you know, I do seven, the, sometimes I do eight. The five reason is going to be because Brian's terrible at doing these, and I'm really better. So. Okay, so Brendan volunteers to watch the horrible movie from now on. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I knew right, sucking at something pass. would be good for me. The real number five. <laughs> okay. The real number five is pointless character description dialogue. As in in the beginning of the movie, like the first like 15 minutes of the movie are just dialogue between characters, okay, where they're essentially just telling you the character description of every other character, which, you know, through dialogue, that's a nice way to learn about a character, but really it was just like we're reading off the, uh, the, the sheet that's told us how we're supposed to get into character. Like, oh, it just just stuff that like made no sense to talk about. Like, oh, that guy, he he works and he's in high school. Yes, yes, he is. And they couldn't just show it to us because it is a movie. Yeah, and you can yeah, see. Or, or you could have you know had just better dialogue, or could have like come up in something that that made sense or mattered to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't matter to the movie. <laughs> yeah, just like oh. I'm your daughter. I do. Uh, I'm in high school. I have a paper due next week. I better. Hooray! 
So so pointless. So number five is those that that pointless uh, descriptive dialogue that was just terrible, which fills up like the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Mm, um, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The number four. It's actually kind of related to number five, but really, really awkward and sudden conversations with the daughter's friend. Okay. And th- there's this... The daughter has a friend who's a male, right? And that he... They talk about randomly for, for whatever reason, but he's around all the time. And they have, like, three conversations with this kid. And they're awkward as crap. And so Nicolas Cage's character is the main character... At one point, when he meets the kid or sees him one other time, he's just like, "Hey, you want to come over here?" Okay. Hey, do you do drugs? Uh, no. Okay. You know, I think you like my daughter. It's like, I think, I think you could go for her. Like, what? Like, huh? okay. <laughs> like, you're really, so I didn't think you would love me and do that. Daughters. Like, I might let you. You got to be bold, though, kid. You got to be bold. Like, that's the most awkward. Is he okay. propositioning him like to be with his daughter? Like, like, but just like this is also in the first five minutes of the movie, and you you have no lead in to care about this situation. It's awkward and sudden as crap. Apparently, he doesn't really know that much about the kid, other than that he's he works, things like that. <laughs> do you work? Yes. Okay. Do you do drugs? Yes. Okay. I think my daughter could go for you. <laughs> and I would approve of you. Yes. As long as you're bold. Um, and then he has another one after... This movie, by the way, is essentially a, a a crappy version of Taken, like a really crappy version of Taken. Like, mm-hmm. really crappy. All right? Um, so after the daughter gets taken, uh, kidnapped, right? Um, Rage? The kid was, yeah, the kid was there, and so he goes and talks to the kids, like, tries to get information about what happened there, and he just comes to the kid and has this, again, a really awkward conversation about, you know, when I was 17, I met my wife. That was your age. And this is what I did if someone ever messed with him. It's like, I expect that you should have taken him. You should have been shot before you let my daughter get taken. It's like, what? Okay, <laughs> thanks, sir. Yeah, and he's like, and I'll hold you personally responsible if anything happens to her. Like, what? <laughs> like, this little kid. What? Well, right. So that's... So that's number four. Like, just these stupid out of nowhere. Like, and there's no lead into these conversations. They're just there, and bad uh, uh, conversations with this guy. Um, number three. Ah, three. T- tough guy crying scenes. Hmm. So this is called Rage. Hmm. It's a ripoff of Taken. What do you think about Taken? Um, Liam Neeson's a badass. Yes, Liam Neeson is a badass. So Nicholas Cage, you expect to be. Uh, maybe a worse badass. Here's the thing. Every time he's with the tough guys, like, he acts kind of tough around other people. Then when he's with the tough guys, his friends that are helping him in this situation, he, break down, he breaks down and cry. cries. Like, I'm serious. He just breaks down and cries in front of the tough guys. When he does an almost badass moment at various points, like kills a guy or something like that or starts beating him, the scene always ends with him whining, crying, and throwing a tantrum. Hmm. That's 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 really you kind of ruined the whole tough guy persona. Not so tough. Just, uh, no, not, ending not so with tough. crying. Yeah, exactly. The tough guy is just crying all the time. Um, number n- number two. No, two. This is, this is something Nicolas Cage is um is known for. Mm-hmm. The stank face. Uh, he's just yeah. That's that's his expression uh, most of the movie. I'm Nicholas Cage. Like Nicholas I got my watch me rage. Yes. No, he's uh, not raging at all during this movie. <laughs> this rage in my face uh, before I cry. Uh, yeah. 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 But that's like all this. That's his emotion throughout the movie. Like when there's maybe an emotional part that you could understand emotion, it's just his emotion is stank face. Mm. That this, you know, that that face when it's like uh, looks like he smells something kind of funky. Uh, someone farted in this room. Yeah, that's gonna make me cry. Oh, my daughter's my my daughter. Here's her effects. Uh, 
Oh man, I have to think about all the, my past life. Watch uh, me do a uh, montage. A, uh, it's the same, same steak face. Emotion the whole time. All right, so it looks like we've gotten to the number one reason why you should not watch this movie. Brendan, what is it? Number one reason? There's no point to the entire movie. Hmm. Things happen during the movie. It should have ended 30 minutes in because if this is a crappy ripoff of Taken, it's failed in everything. <laughs> you have already failed. Everything they do is pointless. The the daughter dies half an hour in, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, I guess there's no point in this movie. She's <laughs> dead. <laughs> there's nothing left to do. <laughs> I can't save her. She'd but, be dead. But but he continues, okay? All right. They hit uh, up people for information. No one has information ever. Uh, Everything they do be, just fails. I'm about to there's cry. no point. People start uh, dying, but there's no point. It doesn't help anyone. It doesn't hurt any. It's just a bunch of criminals killing each other, actually. No hmm. one cares. Hmm. People kind of care sometimes, and Nicolas Cage doesn't listen. Advice is given. No growth. No listening to advice. Nothing happens. You find out at the end this was actually all something really stupid. Hmm. You know, it was actually a bunch of drunk kids that just, whatever. Okay, that's, that's your spoiler, by the way. It was really just kids being drunk and shooting bad guns. So the moral of the movie is if you're Nicolas Cage, have more than one facial expression, and maybe your daughter won't get killed by drunk kids raging. They weren't even raging. No one cared. No one it didn't raged. matter. He doesn't even get revenge on the kids. Yeah. He leaves them. He just goes, hey, look at my stank face. No one grows. Uh, Everyone just dies. And just, uh, uh, <laughs> stank face. Like, there was wow. no did several times before it ended. It's just been like, okay, we're done here. But nope, they keep going. They just keep going. Even after they find out everything that's happened, they just keep, the movie just has to keep going for another ten minutes just mm. for for nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Wow. So, Brendan, <laughs> this sounds like a horrible movie. What yeah. are you going to rate it? Uh, I'm going to have to give this a a one and a half Chewbacca chainsaws out of out of five because of uh, wasting my time entirely uh, and staying fit. Just annoying. You heard why? You heard why? Stink face. I could go for like 20 reasons, but we gave you five. Those are the top five reasons. Yeah, those are the only ones you need. So go ahead and give it its one and a half Chewbacca chainsaws. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So don't watch the movie. It's called Rage. You don't want to watch it. Not very good. It is not. But let's not move on to some movies that uh, hopefully will be good. Um, and that is the Purge series. Now, recently... Uh, the Purge, everybody knows that movie series. Uh, what happens is once a year for 12 hours, everything is legal. You can kill, you can rape, you can murder, you can pillage, you can do whatever you want. It's all legal. And now this has apparently brought down crime, it has brought down poverty, it has brought down unemployment. and apparently Because it's, it's brought down to... the population? Well, just because all the poor people get killed. That's <laughs> pretty much, you can't afford a good gun, the rich people can, and then they can kill you. So, yeah, this movie just recently, uh, it was announced that they are going to do a third installment. It is already in production. It looks like it's going to come out sometime in 2015. And so that will be actually the third year in a row that a Purge movie has come out. Now, Purge 1 did make it onto the horrible movie of the week. I believe Ryan Celsius actually gave us um, that one. So thanks, Ryan. And if you don't know who Ryan Celsius is, just type it into YouTube. You'll see lots of his cool videos. But, um, yeah, so watch that one. Pretty horrible. And then the second one, I just watched recently. I was actually, I was entertained. I mean, I'm not saying it was a great movie. Maybe three out of five. But it went better better from the, the, it like got a whole extra, you know, Chewbacca chainsaw over the first. And I kind of like this idea. It's it's not that I want to ever see this be put into practice in real life, but as a movie series, there's so much things you can do with it. I mean, you could take it anywhere. You could go to multiple cities. You could go with multiple characters. Uh, and, you know, I'm just thinking that this is going to be, hopefully, a better version of The Saws because, you know, Saw is a movie that came out like seven years in a row. We had to have seven of them. After number two, they were all horrendous. 
right? Yeah. The first one was pretty much the best, I thought. And then it was just, oh, let's do another. Yeah, let's do another. Okay, do we still have some money? Yeah, we got some money from the last well, one. Well, it let's... only cost them, like, $10 million to make them, and they would always make, like, $50 million. So why not do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it didn't cost after the first two. they two. Had those that just went straight to DVD or something, too. So Yeah, and still made them money, so, you yeah. know, why not? And then, then you had the Paranormal Activity series, which I think they went through, what, four or five installments? Mm-hmm. And that, again, I mean, was... Horror movies do that a lot. They just go through... They just turn them out, turn them but, out. Turn but them. year after year after year. So yeah. now it's looking like The Purge is going to be the next said set of installment movies, and I'm not just, I, I'm kind of cool with it, you know? Like I said, the second one was a lot better than the first. And they decided to take it out of rich person land and throw you into the city and show you all this chaos, and I kind of got the vibe from this movie that it's almost like, it's almost like a zombie movie. I mean, you got it, you got the vibe of a zombie movie, a group of survivors trying to make it across the city with all these obstacles in their way, but instead of it being, you know, the slow zombies or the fast zombies, you had real live people. So I kind of yeah. like it. Yeah, and you had the sense of, like, someone actually, you know, like, characters choosing to do something for each other. Mm-hmm. You know, almost like there's a hero in that. And, like, the first one, it's just, like, a kid randomly starts to, decides to help one guy because... Well, and then the movie just takes the stupid And then it's just Survivor. Turn. Survive, yeah, well, after that, no, as opposed it to... It takes the stupidest turn. And it's just... I mean, the yeah. first one was just... It had a great cast to it. Ethan Hawke, uh, Le- Lena Headey. I mean, but it was just a horrible movie. Uh, hor- mm-hmm. It made the horrible movie of the week for a reason. But The Purge 2, it, it, it made you... It, it put some suspense into it. They had these really crazy gang of kids in the masks, um, and they were really, really creepy masks. You had this weird government truck running around, and government's doing shady things during this purge time. So they brought in a lot of cool ideas, but it, it's, it's like I said, it's giving you the vibe of a zombie movie, but it has the potential to give you a lot more substance. Not only do you have the vibe of the zombie, but you can kind of get some themes... You know, if you've ever heard of a, a decent proposal, that is one of the first examples of satire out in the world, um, where an English writer, everybody was like, what do we do about the Irish? Because they subjected them all to poverty from the... England pretty much stole all the resources. A modest proposal? Modest proposal, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they said, well, what do we do about all the Irish? Well, let's eat their babies. <laughs> or make them eat their own babies. You know, funny, you know, satire. And it almost gives you a good version of satire with these movies because it's like, okay, government, what do we do with the poor people? Oh, let's just kill them all, you know? And and I really like the way this is going. And and I could see there being like... Now, this would be kind of my my hope was what they do with it, is bring out some sort of, like, superhero. Maybe not somebody with powers, but, like... Someone who goes around and helps people during the purge. Maybe. Yeah, and there is one guy in The Purge, too. There is a guy, he's kind of the reluctant hero, which I, I, I like that, too. Um, but he helps out these guys. But I would almost like to see, like, a guy, like a Batman, like, flying yeah, around you, only you during Purge almost, night. Yeah, and with that setup, you can almost see uh, progress over the course of the, the series of, you know, s- starting to maybe get groups of people that kind of don't approve of of the purge and try to actually resist people, like and counter they, kill people. They do kind of do that. They do kind of bring in Omar from yeah, the Wire, you, you the great this. actor. He becomes you one of those girl. types of characters. You but I'm saying you could do just girl. totally different things every movie. I mean, if you're going to make it a yearly install, installment, that's, that's you can do you can do one where it's like some kids get stuck out during the purge and they they get out, or some old people, or you know, it could be on the ocean. It could be you know, you could do tons of different things. You could look from it from the government trying to quell the pop, call the population. I mean, they, and that's that's what I like about it because there's so many different possibilities for this mm. movie series that they can if they try and it does not have to be big budget. I mean, you just you're talking about a basic cityscape. You don't have to have much to it. Um and it, it could be a decent series, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. I hope it, it develops into something that I will continually want to watch, not like the yeah. first one. I would say that it seems like they have two paths they can go. Either one seems like a good idea. Um, one, if they decide to just be... If they want to just be a horror movie style, yeah, they can turn these out uh, probably to better effect than a lot of other horror movies because, like you said, they're not tied really to one person. This is a policy and event, as opposed to a lot of horror movies that are about, you know, 
creature, single creature, single mm-hmm. killer, whatever. Jason, Freddy, you know, those those guys. The Saw killer, whatever. J- uh, Jigsaw killer, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, Mike Myers. Like, you, so there's only so much you can do. You're just turning out the same thing and like, oh, why isn't he got, got whatever it is. Um, you have to kind of go with the same idea over and over. This is a policy of a day, and it's a very broad policy. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things you can do, and you can go different characters, like you said, different places, um, different events. You can even start focusing on different stuff happening. Like, it doesn't have to be all about killing, because a lot of murder happens, but other stuff happens too, because it's just everything's legal. legal. And and another thing that I gotta say is, like I said, number one from to number two, I mean, number two is like twice the movie that number one was. But also they showed that they can really develop characters Mm -hmm. In that and that's one. the that's the second route I would say that they could go is if they don't want to just be jumping around, they could go more of a a, a thriller, uh, more social commentary route, um, like we were talking about the satirical side, mm-hmm. and either develop characters or just develop uh, a trend throughout where, like I said, like resistance to the purge where people start becoming disenchanted with the idea of the purge, and you can have an endpoint of overturning it, some kind of revolution, whatever, something going on there, or people really starting to build up, like, um, and taking responsibility to go against uh, the mentality of, of what the purge is about. Um, so you could go the, the either route. You could go the, like, now you develop heroes, like you said, or you could go the route of just, this is a horror movie that shows how different people handle the situation, and you have a wide variety of things you can do in that situation. And personally, um, I'm not, and personally, I'm not a horror movie fan. I really, I don't enjoy horror movies very much, so I hope they go more of the, uh, you know, Thriller. okay, let's show some good parts of society. Like, like I said, the, they develop a character, and they're like, okay, something good comes out of something horrible, and I'd rather hear them go that way rather than the whole, oh, let's just put some guys in scary masks and have them hunt down a group and eventually just hack them to pieces. That, you know, the horror movie route. So, I don't know. But let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at my, it's my face on Twitter, words my face at gmail.com. Uh, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways to get a hold of us. Do you want this to go the horror route? Or would you rather it go, like, the hero route? Let us know what you think. But let's take that and let's keep on rolling down the entertainment road. And let's talk about a little bit of New York Comic Con, some of the TV uh, reveals slash first looks that came out. First one I want to talk about is Daredevil. Uh, Now, I haven't seen any of the footage. They did show footage because, you know, they like to show that only to the people who get there, which is is really annoying. It's like, come on, if this many people saw it, why can't you just put it on YouTube, guys? Come on. Come on. Probably because of Comic Con. Probably one of their deals with Comic Con is make it exclusive, but also probably, like we said with uh, Deadpool, remember they did that with Deadpool and they started taking down everything when people uh-huh. posted it? Because now everyone's talking about it because they're taking it down, because they're not allowing it. Right, so you got a little bit out there, but no one's allowed to know about it. So. Yeah, so they showed a little bit of footage from Daredevil, and now uh, they said it was something. Some one of the main characters walks into a room, and there's blood all over the floor, and this like killer guy jumps out, and then Daredevil jumps out to help, and they, there's this really brutal fight. And so it's, it's, it's really seeming like they're going down the Frank Miller road. That's really what they've said is their inspiration for this show, is the Frank Miller version of Daredevil, which, if you know anything about Frank Miller... They're also that's pretty much what Christopher Nolan used as his inspiration for the, uh, the you know the what do they call that Batman. the Dark Knight, the Dark Dark Knight, Knight trilogy, trilogy. Um, and so Face of Dark Knight Rises, yeah, um, which was a Frank Miller. Yeah, I mean the the movies were not based off, but that tone was based off of yeah. the, the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, they tone. took they took the theme, you know, the darker tone um, mm-hmm. of the Dark Knight series, and that seems what they're doing. And again, they might not be basing this off of the actual stories of the comics, but they're basing really the theme uh, off of the Frank Miller stories. But uh, they showed off Daredevil in his first suit, and it's going to be an all-black suit, which, if you ask me... Now, don't get me wrong, I love the color red, especially the red Daredevil color. But this looks just, I mean, I'm kind of wearing it right now. But the the black suit just tends to, it just looks a lot cooler to me. It was honestly. always kind of like a, or at least I remember, it was like a very dark red. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, a little darker than this. I mean, in the cartoon, you would see like, like this infrared. color. Because it's supposed to be like infrared, like how he sees, right? Mm, he doesn't, well, yeah. Yeah, he, he sees. kind of sees he in sonar. Like sonar, whatever he does. 
I don't know. But I mean, if he's it's Daredevil, <laughs> I would say black would be the better way to do it. I mean, that's the best type of like urban camouflage. So if he can't see colors anyway, what's the point of making yourself brighter to everybody else? What if he was like, oh, uh, which which suit should I wear? Oh, I'll wear the red suit, and then he accidentally puts on the red top and the black pants, and he doesn't realize it, and he's totally mismatched with all day. Do you think anybody would tell him, hey, Daredevil, you're not matching today? <laughs> it's fine over there. Like, you jerk, I'm blind. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're totally insensitive. But, uh, yeah, so... Does anyone know that Daredevil's blind? Like... Like the the villains huh. and the people don't know that he's blind, right? That's just part of his story. I, I don't I don't think they do. I think that's that's true, and that's also part of his like uh, cover is nobody expects the blind lawyer to be Daredevil because he yeah. can't see, even though like he does things that make everybody think he can see all the time. I'm sure because if you can really see in sonar, I'm sure that it's not that bad. I don't know. Mm. I, I can't see in sonar, so I, I can't really tell you. But so really what we're seeing with the first look they, they showed us is really saying, hey, we are not going to go the Ben Affleck Daredevil route. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> we're going to give you a better, a better tone to this show. And they asked, actually also showed, like they announced that Rosaria Dawson's going to be playing a character. I can't remember the name, um, but in the comics, she's also the girlfriend to Luke Cage, which will be another one of their series. So it looks like they're starting to tie those in together because there's going to be the four series and that are going to tie together and make bring them all together, uh, because they're pretty much looking at the Marvel Hell's Kitchen heroes. So, Mm. it's going to be interesting with uh, Jessica Jones, uh, who is Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, as Mm. well as Daredevil. So, we'll see those guys kind of team up at some point in the near, well, not near future, probably next couple years. But, I just thought it looked really cool. I like the tone. Again, I kind of like the darker, grittier tones of some of these superhero movies. Don't get me wrong. I love the campy stuff, too. You can't, I, I mean, still... Shark repellent, yes. Did I love the Batman movie from the '60s any less? No, no, no. I I don't understand people who don't like the old Adam West stuff because it's just so hilarious. <laughs> it's just great. I mean, it, you can't go wrong. You can't. It's go good wrong. for very different reasons. Than yeah, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it just has a good time with it. So you know, you can't blame that. But then the next show that came out of Comic Con New York, um, they showed the first trailer of Powers. Now, we talked about that a couple months ago, so if you don't know what we're talking about, go ahead and pause us right now. Go ahead and look at our previous video. It'll tell you everything about that, or you can just wait, and I'm kind of going to give you a recap. Um, so that's PlayStation Network has decided to make their own show, uh, and so this is going to come out pretty much if you have PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, any type of Sony thing like that, you're going to be able to watch the show. And it's about... It's in a world of superheroes, and a guy who used to be a superhero with superpowers and everything loses said superpowers and doesn't know what to do with himself, so he becomes a cop. So the cops are like, okay, well, you can be part of the powers division, and it's how the cops deal with people with superpowers. And now this show looks like it is going to be very, very graphic in every sense of the word. Um, Just in the trailer alone, I think they dropped like five F-bombs. I mean, you know, they're going hard R for this one. And I think that's kind of interesting because you wouldn't necessarily think Sony would want to go that route because, I mean... Well, at least, not on their PlayStation, at least not on their PlayStation platform as, like, the one of the flagship um, shows for them starting to produce TV for the PlayStation Network. So. Yeah. But I like it because as... As a gamer, as a guy who likes that type of stuff, I'm going to be very excited to see. And so maybe it seems like they're going for the hardcore genre first, and then when they start branching out, if this works for them, and they say, well, hey, we might be able to attract more people to our our systems this way, they might lighten it up and have some other TV shows and stuff like that. Not that they need a lot of more attraction to their system, because the PS4, last I heard, was... (laughs) Way ahead of everyone else yeah. in sales, so of the next generation. So, yeah, they're they're killing it. So, I will be a PS4 owner. That's that's. What can I say? I think maybe it's more of using the PS3 uh, and PS4 sales as a way to bolster their their entertainment with the with putting PSN on it. Yeah, and you have been hearing that their movie division of Sony hasn't been doing so hot. Um, they recently canceled the Venom Carnage movie, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's gonna 
So maybe this is their way of maybe bolstering that a little bit more. So eh, yeah. it's just interesting. But hey, if we get good entertainment, I don't care why you do it. I just like to be entertained. So bring it yeah. on, and you will have a supporter. And that that's something to to consider too, though. Like you were talking about the because they have the Spider Man series, so it's not like they're new to doing these superpower, mm-hmm. um, just film, TV, whatever. They have some experience with doing this stuff. So yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. That actually. I didn't think of it before, but they even higher hopes now. Even mm-hmm. higher hopes. Maybe Spider-Man, Spider-Man on well. powers, huh? Uh, 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 yeah, not gonna but, but I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, is there anything else we missed out of New York Comic Con? Actually, I'll have a bunch of quick hits, so don't worry about that. But uh, which show are you looking more forward to? More forward to. All right. Forward to more. Forward. I'll learn the English language one of these days. I'll figure it out. Don't worry. But which one of these shows are you looking forward to? Um, both of them, one of them in particular. Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's take that and roll that into one of my favorite segments of the night. And this is why I say this, because I don't see Brendan getting ready. Oh, he is ready. Because he's making really weird faces. I wish the camera was on him right now. Because he's making really weird faces. But let's jump into the quick hits of the night. All right, all right. Now it's time for the first quick hit. And that is uh, yeah. All right, Victor Zaz and Harvey Dent. Uh, this is news coming out of Comic Con New York. Um, are going to yes. be, are going to be upcoming characters in the next couple weeks of uh, the Gotham show on Fox. And Zaz, if you don't know, he is a serial killer that likes to cut people, and then everybody he kills, he cuts a mark in his arm. I think his best representation was actually in um, Arkham City game, where he and maybe Arkham Asylum. I think it was in Arkham Asylum too, but it. That was one of the best representations of him. He's really creepy. He's kind of eerie. He's one of those rich kids. He's kind of like the anti-Bruce Wayne. He's a rich kid who went the evil way instead of the good way. So I, I, I'm looking because forward to it. Because his parents didn't die. No, I think they or died. They? They, I think they died because of his gambling debts or something like that. Like some gangsters killed him. Okay. Like I said, I think he's just like the opposite. He had the same type of upbringing as Bruce Wayne. It's just but he chose a different path. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it's kind of cool to see those mirror characters. But let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is the Jim Henson Company is working on making a Labyrinth Two. No word yet as to if David Bowie will be reprising his role. But I just found that interesting. That was a movie it's I liked. Been when a I was long a kid. time since that movie came out too. Uh, over 20 years, maybe maybe close to 25 years. So like you, you'd expect to see a remake before we see a sequel yeah. <laughs> at this point. But eh. but hey, how can you how can you replace David Bowie as that creepy dude in the movie? I wonder if they're gonna bring back the guy who can like call rocks. He goes rocks, rocks, like a bunch of rocks roll down. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I just thought it was interesting news. But let's move it on to the next quick kid. And more news out of Comic-Con New York. Um, apparently, Guardians of the Galaxy, because its movie just blew up, uh, is going to have its own animated series that will be showing up on Disney XD. And now, Disney XD is becoming a channel that I'm liking more and more and more because they have Ultimate Spider-Man, I believe, which is a good show. And they have um, uh, Rebels, Star Wars Rebels. They're about to have this Hulk uh, Agents of Smash isn't horrible. All right, yeah, I like a lot of cartoons. I'm a little kid at heart. You could just watch them on Netflix at this point. Some of those, yeah. But not all of them. Like, I can't watch Rebels on, on Netflix. I have to watch that on Disney XD. That's why uh, I've gone to me. Uh... But, uh, yeah, so let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is Google. In, they've, they've tried to do, you know, their Street View thing all over the world. They want to give you anywhere you want to go. They want to give you like a 360 view of it. So they've started mapping out the Arabian Desert and they use camels for that. I just thought that, that was interesting. That, that, just, that just fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I would assume they could still get book, uh, like, um, I don't know, sand 
machine. Do- dune buggies, yeah, dune, dune buggies. buggies. There you go, buggies. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, it would still work, yeah, but no, no. The camels, we're gonna go camels. Go on the camel route. I, I think that just adds a little bit of uh, you know culture to it. I think I think camels are, are taller than most of the stuff that they use, so maybe get an even higher view. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I just yeah, I, yeah. why why, right. why do you need a street view of the Arabian Desert? Who's going to be like I need this address? And they'll be like in the middle of the Arabian Desert. And you're you know like, what? because eventually you will. eventually you're going to be like man I'm in the middle of the Arabian Desert. How do I get out of here? And then and then you're like what? wait I, I can't tell oh, if that, I'm in the right spot. That and rock. Then it that does rock, a 360 it. view. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like wait everything looks the same. Oh wait there's a rock I see. All right so now I know where I am. So yeah. That's it. That's an interesting one. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And this is probably, like, I'm not a huge comic reader. I do enjoy comics. I do like a lot of the stories that come out of there. I like them more as, you know, TV shows and movies. But I'm going to have to go out and buy some comics because there is going to be a four-part miniseries comic of Archie versus Predator. <laughs> Serious? Not even joking. I saw the cover. It looks amazing. And uh, apparently Archie and Jughead are going to go on a rampage with this one. <laughs> like, are they going to take on Predator? I have no idea how this is going to work. I really don't. But uh, I guess they've done... I'm getting it. Because they've done care. Predator versus Alien, Predator versus some other stuff, right? I guess. Predator versus Archie. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, 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 all I know is all I'm right. getting it, so it's coming you out gotta, in 2015. Yeah, you gotta get it. When you, when you throw those two together, it's like, gotta see it. Yeah, gotta read so, it. Yeah, and that was our quick kits of the night. All right, so let's talk about our last subject of the night, and of course that'll be our video games of the evening. And um, I, now everybody's kind of talking about this, so you know it's not like news, news. But I, I like Star Wars. I like Star Wars games, and I don't understand why there's so many canceled ones. Now a lot of that is Disney saying none of this is canon, so just stop doing it. And a lot of it is just makes no sense. But recently they've come out and they've shown there's been about twenty to twenty five different Star Wars games that were in some state of completion that have been canceled just Mm -hmm. out of the blue. Uh, Most recently, the big one was Rogue Squadron for the Wii. That was totally finished. It was a complete game. (laughs) And they said, nah, 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 we're not going to do that. And it's like, uh, why not? Because that would be awesome. Uh, So I'm just going to run down a couple of the games that were canceled. Um... Yeah, and it doesn't make much sense. Star Wars 1313, if you remember that one, you were going to be a bounty yeah. hunter. That one looked really awesome as well. I don't that was that like was a big show too. Time. Like they were trying to hype that one like crazy cuz it was looking awesome. So I, I don't know why they canceled that one. Um they also had a Rogue Squadron trilogy that was going to be released for the Wii so it had all the two original ones I believe one was on 64 and one was on GameCube and then some some other one. So they all three of them together, that got canceled, that whole package. Uh, one that really kind of disappointed me, and I really wanted to see it, especially after I saw the Clone Wars, was the Darth Maul game. They were going to make one where you were Darth Maul, pretty much showing his upbringing, because in the yeah, movies... He was, he was like one of the best uh, heroes to play as in the uh, in Battlefront 2. Like, he was one of my yeah. favorites. He was awesome to play as. Like, yeah. He's, Great. Well, I mean, in the movies, he, yeah, he was in one of the crappiest Star Wars movies ever. Yes, he was great in it. Like, but he, if you had doing to, nothing, if you had to have a, a shining point of that, of that, that one movie, it was Darth Maul's fight at the end, and you're like, wow, this guy's amazing. I really like to watch him. And if you did watch the Clone Wars, which you, ha- if you haven't, go ahead and jump on Netflix. There's like 125 episodes of epicness. Clone Wars was amazing. He's in a good couple of the seasons, so um, it just shows how cool of a character he was and his brother. And so they really could have done a lot with that, which would have just been awesome. Now, there, I'm going to run through a couple other names real quick because I think some of these uh, were planned like one, two, three games, you know, like, oh, we're going to have a bunch of them together or something like that. Um, now you have Rebel Scum, Rebel Warrior, Rebel Agent, Rebel Fury, Rebel Jedi... So I imagine that would have that you would have cut one or two of those out anyway and made those into a series of games. But I mean a lot of a lot of rebel stuff. Mm. Of course, you know. 
Um, Rise of the Rebellion. That would have been a cool one. Now, they're kind of doing that with Star Wars Rebels, showing you the Rise of the Rebellion, but yeah, it'd be cool to play it. I mean, and, and all these games don't have to be just your straight-up shooters. You could do games like Battlefront. You could have more strategy games. You could do games like, I don't know. Oh, they've done plenty of different styles over the years. I mean, they, they've Well, they did an RTS flying. one, which was pretty cool. Yeah. But they've, they've done, done, you know, flying games, mm-hmm. like motion games, all kinds of stuff. TIE Fighter? Star Wars has so many games in its series. So. Yeah, TIE Fighter from uh, the, yeah. the PC back in the day is still one of my favorite games of all time, flying simulator type games. Yeah. Um, uh, you have uh, uh, Rogue Jedi. That just sounds cool to be a, like a bad Jedi. That would be awesome. Dark Jedi, of course. Again, you know, bad Jedi. Who wouldn't want to be the dark side dark of the force? Jedi that are not Sith. It doesn't say Sith, but it just says Dark Jedi. So uh, it's in- all right. Um, then you have uh, which ones haven't I gotten over? Jedi Knight three. Now Jedi Knight one and what? two were Xbox games, and they were really good. And it was really cool because it was kind of took place after uh, the third movie in the original trilogy. And at points, Luke kind of helps you through and he, like, trains you a little bit. So I really did enjoy those Jedi Knight games. Those were really cool. So Jedi Knight 3 is probably a a missed opportunity there. Did you ever Hmm. play any of those? Uh, Well, wasn't, like, the first one... Because I thought that was, uh, what, what was it? Uh, Knights of the Old Republic was, like, Knights of the Old Republic 2 was Jedi Knight. What, isn't it? No. Mm Mm-mm. I don't think Jedi Academy. I don't know. Mm, well, I Jedi Academy a Jedi was too. I definitely um, have a Jedi Knight game. I think Jedi Knight Rangers. 2 Jedi Academy was what it was. Yeah, there you go. Because um, uh, I have I have like a whole bunch of those Star Wars. There's so many. Maybe that's why they cancel a bunch, because there's so many Star Wars games out there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not have, all like, of them are good. of them somewhere. But... So yeah, yeah, you can together. get the packs of them. And yeah, Knights of the Old Republic, that was an awesome. And I, I think it's just if you make a decent game, throwing it in that universe just makes gives you an already it gives you a universe that everybody already knows, everybody already understands, everybody already loves. So it's easier to make a game. You just gotta focus on the gameplay mechanics because the story pretty much writes itself. I mean, yeah. it makes it a lot easier for developers, just focus on the game playing. Don't worry about the story. That'll come together. I mean, it's not hard to write a Star Wars story. Okay, um, we'll have one good guy who's the light side of the force, one bad guy who's dark side of the force. Um, somehow they're going to conflict, and fun happens. Yes, it's not hard to write a Star Wars story, which is how we end up with Star Wars 1, 2, and 3. Okay, no, he just ruined those. All right, he horrible <laughs> casting, uh, way too much special effects, Uh, just relying on everything, he kind of flipped a 180 from what he did in the first ones, and where you have a, you know, instead of showing you how these characters develop, they kind of tell you how the characters develop, and it just is cheesy and not fun. What you're saying is they really need to just make a new movie, TV show, and game about Chewbacca Chainsaws. Yes, that is exactly, that's all we need. (laughs) Chewbacca agrees. He agrees. And that's it. Um, but um, two of the ones that I read that were canceled that really, really looked like they'd be fun is you had a Star Wars Darth Vader game, which if you could be Darth Vader hunting down, like I said, they write themselves, hunting down the Jedi between movies three and four, uh, that would be pretty awesome. Just think about it. Think about Jedi it. Hunters? Okay, there is a Jedi Hunter game too. So what? <laughs> that was a canceled game too. So uh, you know, same idea. Um, but uh, yeah, but but Darth Vader, who hasn't wanted to really take the reins as Darth Vader, you kind of get to do that in the Force Unleashed, the very first level. They let you take Je- uh, uh, Darth Vader over, and in Battlefront, you get to play as Darth Vader. But really, you know, he's one of the best villains of all time. I mean, he's really what made villains charismatic. If you don't have Darth Vader as such a great villain, then the whole Star Wars doesn't work. It just does not work. And then when they try to transition him from a villain to maybe being a little bit of a good guy, you realize he's Luke's father and everything like that, then they bring in the super villain with the Emperor. So I think they should have an Emperor Palpatine game too. That's not one of the canceled ones, but it'd be cool. Emperor Rising. Emperor Rising. 
Actually, that might be boring because it'd be like, oh, I'm going to go into a life of politics. Ha ha. Yeah, yeah, he did do most of his stuff <laughs> yeah. in politics initially. But no, right, but, but no, there's, there's backstory. He, exactly. he somehow was a Sith. So. Well, yeah, he was a Sith. He trained Darth Maul. That was one of his first apprentices. So, so. he's got to have something, some dark action going on behind the scenes for for his rise up as the the one Sith for mm-hmm. a long time. So. And and then the last game that I really wanted to touch on was uh, there was a Han Solo, Star Wars Han Solo game that was canceled. And what better opportunity to let you run around as a Wookiee than in a Han Solo game? You know what? Chewbacca, you need to go ahead over to the now uh, extinct LucasArts and ask them why they never made a Chewbacca game. Not too pleased. Not too pleased. And he's not, he's not angry at us. He's angry at, at them for not making one. Um, but there's still time. Go ahead and make a Chewbacca game. Because what what better and have Han Solo be his sidekick? Because that's really how it should have gone. I mean, come well, on. I mean, Chewbacca's been alive a lot longer too, so it's been like a it's million years. That's yeah. Chewbacca's. He fought with Yoda in the one thing too, so that's mm. right. He did. He did. So I mean, yeah, you could take it all the way. You could connect the trilogies pretty much. And then have all the fun in between the trilogies where he meets Han Solo and everything like that. But you could have the huge battle scenes in the beginning with Kashyyyk. Uh, you know, Yoda's in there. All those guys are in there. And then transition that into where he's being chased around the galaxy by the Empire. Because when they turned on the Jedis, they turned on the Wookiees too. And then and he joins up with Han Solo. And, hmm. and eventually ends up on Earth and turns into Sasquatch. And 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 moves next door. And then door. moves into the yeah Brian's house. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, shows up on this radio show uh, slash YouTube channel slash whatever. Yeah, wins every it. Olympics. <laughs> you know, medal and all those well, kinds of stuff. There's so much that Chewbacca yeah. has done. Like we said, <laughs> the stories story. write themselves when you're doing Star Wars. They write themselves. So let us know. Is there anything, um, any game that you would want to see a Star Wars game of? Anything that we're missing, you know, any of these stories, let us know. Give us some of your ideas. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words From My Face on Twitter. Words From My Face at gmail.com. Words From My Face.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to be about, about it for tonight's show. Um, so as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint.